This week, the majority of the PCC Cup Series is here in Charlotte. Some of you who may be joining us from the Brno race earlier today might know, have noticed that Claire Aussier blew up very early in that event, which opens up the championship for a variety of contenders that are here today, including Ian Elias, Nicholas Cordovos, among others. Qualifying was rained out, so uh, the 11 car, well, the 11 car of Claire Aussier would be starting on the pole here, but since that team's in Brno, uh, JK Racing owned by John Kirkpatrick, typically the driver of the 41 car, uh, has fielded an entry in, uh, uh, I, I guess they're trying to accrue some more owner points so they can try and win the owner's championship with that car, but he has entered a number 11 car. Uh, he is fielding three cars this weekend, the 11, the 14, and the 41, as an agreement with uh, Manticore Engineering. So the 11 car will be starting on the pole for this race, and uh, that car was pretty pretty slow in practice. So fingers crossed that we don't have a stack up here uh, at the start. Now uh, let's take you to the track. Qualifying got rained out, so the pole goes to Billy Ray James in the number 11 car. The field was set on owner points, so this uh, JK Racing, I think that's Basil Marceau car, something like that. Basil Marceau is on the hood of that car. Well, it looks like uh, Gaspar D'Souza rockets out to a huge lead as the, all three JK Racing cars appear to be very slow on the high side. At least they're sticking to the high side and letting most of the leaders go by. Uh, but yeah, those cars are pretty bad. Uh, so here's Gaspar D'Souza who has opened up a huge lead over Ian Elias. Right now, the top five, you've got Gaspar D'Souza, Ian Elias, Ferry Juveno, Nicholas Cordovas, and Greg Maddox. All five of those are going for the title. I'll have a realistic shot at the title, but it looks like the caution lights are on. Caution one, very early on, lap number two. Here in the back, we're looking at Lewis Jones, as it looks like Ingrid Hadline makes a dive bomb move on uh, Richard Dean MacGyver there in the number 85. Lewis Jones goes up into the wall and will continue on with just some rear end damage. Let's go on board Kyle McWalla here in the number 53 car. This is his first start all season, his first start since uh, I believe uh, sometime last year. And it looks like Ingrid Hadland puts MacGyver into the wall after that move. So uh, can't really say I'm too surprised. Hadland is a very aggressive driver. Gaspar D'Souza leads on the restart, but it looks like Elias is going to make a move on the bottom and try and take the lead away from Gaspar D'Souza, and he will do so. The Aussie, Ian Elias, going for the championship, and he takes the lead. Here uh, in the back, we're looking at Cale Bernfart Jr., and you can just see the, uh, the great wall that has formed because of these JK racing cars. Uh, we've got three wide. Ooh, that's, uh, that's pushing it there. Uh, the, that I don't know why they, why they coordinated it like that, but the, that that's not going to end well if they keep driving like that. So here's Gaspar de Souza, and he is pulling on the inside. He's going for the lead again here on uh, I think this is lap number nine. Going for the lead, this is a 100 lap race, and uh, Gaspar D'Souza already making some moves for the lead, trying to uh, make his way back up to the front. He's going for this championship as well. I don't think uh, much can get in his way, but Ian Elias, two laps later, lap 11, he's going to make a move on the bottom, trying to catch up, and uh, with some help from Barry Juveno and uh, Alex Phillips, Alex Phillips in the 52 standing in for the injured Lenny Jacobs, He's going to take the lead on the bottom, as now it looks like Alex Phillips is making a move up to second place. Here's J.C. Carpenter, who uh, he started a few races early last year with the Zenus team, then kind of bounced around and ended up at Impact Racing. Oh, we've got some smoke there, but uh, J.C. Carpenter running for this upstart uh, circle track racing team in the number 79 car. Uh, looks like something happened to Pete Maverick. Gaspar D'Souza gets into Barry Juveno. Juveno gets hooked down. And uh, Maverick goes spinning into the inside wall. He's got a bit of damage on that car, but I think he'll be okay. Uh, the damage doesn't look too severe, but why is he not staying on the apron? Um, uh, well, Lewis Jones goes into the wall trying to avoid him there. And here's Ben Worthington driving the third Lucas Motorsports car, the 06. This is the car he's going to be in for Cleveland. 
as the six car is going to Nicole Bolas, the winner of the SCRA Sunshine State 500. So uh, they're just getting this car ready. They've actually got three entries in this race. Uh, the 06, the 6, and the 36, all three qualified. And here, I mentioned before, Alex Phillips, driver of the 52 car this week. Um, Lenny Jacobs started the race and switched out under that first caution. He'll take the lead. So Alex Phillips, the star driver for Johnson Racing in the PCC Lights, is getting his first taste of PCC Cup Series competition here. And, uh, well, he's... He's doing all he can right now, and he's put that car up in the lead. Ben Worthington here slicing and dicing through traffic as, oh, Scott Wallen hooks him. He saves it, and we've got cars fanning all over the front stretch. And how, how'd they not wreck? H how did they not wreck right there? Let's go on board Chris Winter, and uh, ooh, he cuts into the grass and uh, makes... A couple passes there, and he saves it, and continues on. Well, that, that that ended a lot better than I was hoping. So here's Travis Keating in this number 14 car, and that, that car looks pretty familiar. It was listed on the entry list as a 2008 Ford, uh, and I think I recognize that car it showed up at Atlanta with, I think the driver was John Kirk. God, really? Well, that that abomination of a car. I think I think that car. Yeah, that car DNQ'd for Atlanta in 2008. Really? Are they, are, are they still using that car? Alex Phillips continues to hold the lead over Gaspar de Souza. Here's Kelly Blackwater, and she's running up here in uh, a pretty good position. She's in ninth place, so she just fell out of the top 30 in owners' points. And uh, the driver she's competing with is Stringfellow Vincent for that position. Vincent is nine points ahead of her in the coveted 30th place in owner points. And uh, if the race were to end now, she would actually be uh, locked in the top 30, though it doesn't really matter because uh, Cleveland is, means everyone has to qualify on their own. Here's Zach Meyer subbing for... Uh, Ben Worthington. Worthington is in the 06 car. They picked up uh, they picked up Meyer kind of on a whim, and he is running up in fifth place. So a good job for him. He's staying up there near the front. And here we're looking at uh, his teammate Scott Wallen. And Scott Wallen is up to 11th place in the third Lucas Motorsports car. So all three cars are running very well, and we've got some smoke up there. Uh, let's see. What, oh, Barry Juvenal. Oh, we've got four wide. Uh, Juveno, excellent save into the wall there. Uh, how, how is that not a caution, though? Uh, so, some Somebody go wake up the flag man. That, that should have been a caution. Yeah, we're going to go on board with Stringfellow Vincent. See what he saw. Is we've just got a hornet's nest of cars in front of him. Holding his line, holding his line. Oh, it looks like Gallagher went into the wall. Cockner went into the wall. And uh, Barry Juvenal continues on. He's got a little bit of damage on that car, but it shouldn't be too bad. Here's Rubbit Nielsen uh, going on the bottom, trying to get around Patrick, uh, not Patrick, Travis Keating, excuse me. Uh, and uh, Dan Ferre hooks him down into him. As here's Casey Lester, and he gets pinched. And all this has happened in the past few laps, and all because of those uh, JK Racing cars, but. Looks like uh, he's running pretty well. The 23 car, uh, he's running up in the main pack, doing a decent job here today. As here's Preston Bell going for the lead around Gaspar de Souza. At least trying to. Uh, Lewis Jones is giving some problems. Uh, Lewis Jones, no. Looks like uh, Gaspar de Souza is going to hold on to the lead because Preston Bell doesn't know how to manage a lapped car when he sees one. So uh, Alex Phillips and uh, Zach Meyer go by on the inside. Stringfellow Vincent here is, uh, ooh, that didn't look too good. Um, well, Barry Juvenal just kind of shoved him into the wall. It's really all about all I can say about that. Here's Sam Brown, and he's running back in fourth place. And he recently announced that he's retiring at the end of the season to accept a managerial position at this team. And uh, he's looking to go out with a win here, or at least the top five. So 
kudos to him. Uh, Alex Phillips, the driver in the number 52, is going to be replacing him. Daniel Lecklider dives onto pit road uh, on lap number 30 of 100, and this, we believe, is an unscheduled pit stop, as I haven't seen anybody else come in for quite some time. Now, uh, here's Barton Sandy, and he's running in seventh place, uh, duking it out with some of these championship contenders up here. This is a very surprising run. He narrowly avoided severe injury last week when Sir, er, Sergei Yakovsky's car um, slammed into his windshield, but he managed to avoid severe injury. So good run for him. Bobby Dollar blows up here uh, on lap number 32. Can't say I'm too surprised that car has been plagued with unreliability throughout the year. His day is done and he'll be the first retirement for the race. Here's Cameron Taylor and uh, his day ends too, the next lap actually. So a rash of engine failures here within two laps puts two drivers out of the race. And, uh, well, can't say I'm too surprised. I mean, uh, PCC Cup cars are not the most reliable cars in the garage. So Alex Phillips peeks on the inside of uh, Gaspar D'Souza here. And it looks like Zach Meyer is going to try and make it three wide on the bottom there for second. And now three wide for first place is Zach Meyer subbing being the super sub in that number six car. Looks for the lead on the bottom. And I think he's going to get it. Zach Meyer in the six car. Last time he ran a race was Cleveland last year in his family owned number 25. That team actually shut down at the end of last season. So uh, he's running near the front, getting his one chance of the year to do something. And uh, I can't say I'd be too surprised if we saw him at Cleveland with another team. Uh, but looks like Sam Brown is gonna take a move on the inside and try and make a pass here on him, and he's gonna do so. That car is not the most powered car in the garage. Here is Whitney Fuller, and she is running up in 19th place, doing a decent job in this number seven car. This is only the car's third start this year. It started at Las Vegas and Grand Detour, and she managed to put it into the field here, so uh, this car has qualified for about 60% of the races that it's attempted so far. Not too bad odds. Lap 42 of 100, Zach Meyer once again going for the lead. Three wide on the bottom. Looks like uh, Ramsey Cockner and Ingrid Hadeland are going a lap down. Hadeland nearly goes into the wall. But I think Meyer is going to go back to the lead here on lap number 42, making a big push. There's Ian Elias back there. He's managed to catch up to this lead group. Oh, big block there on Sam Brown. He almost got turned but it looks like Zach Meyer is going to hold on to the top spot. Oh, that would be a big upset if Zach Meyer managed to win here today. Not only for that six team, but also for the driver. I mean, this is his first start. Here is Tom Wilson moved up to second place as uh, more cars have caught up to this lead group. Tom Wilson running for Johnson Racing. He's actually going to be one of the drivers who's replacing uh, Sam Brown. I believe he's going to be running either the 71 or the 91 next year as uh, Jeffries is getting sacked from that team. Here's Kelly Blackwater, and she's kind of lost the main pack, but she's still running up in 12th place, which is a damn good run for this team. Uh, this team desperately needs a very good run. As I mentioned before, they're out of the top 30 in owner points, and uh, Stringfellow Vincent has had some problems, so I pr I'm pretty sure she's going to get that car in back into the top 30. Here is Kyle McWalla. He's running in 16th place right now in the Zenith, subbing for Andrew Tamerzan. And this is his first start since Mansfield last year, where uh, I think he wrecked out. He didn't do quite well. But he has been running the PCC lights and has been quite good in that series driving his own car. And uh, Zenith decided to give him a shot, so here he is running up in the top 20 in that uh, number 53 Nike car. Uh, Canada Dry also on board that team as Preston Bell back up in the lead with Zach Meyer in second, Alex Phillips in third, Ian Elias making a push with Phillips in fourth. So the Paloma cars have definitely been working together here. As you see there, looks like they're planning to make a move on the bottom. And uh, Alex Phillips making a move up to second place with help from Ian Elias. Elias being an excellent mentor in that car uh, for him even though Phillips is going to Johnson Racing next year. 
uh, the team spirit over there at Paloma is, you can really tell that it's holding strong as now Preston Bell loses the lead to Alex Phillips that lap, but Ian Elias says, uh-uh, I'm going to take that lap. Uh, I'm going to take this next lap here, and Phillips lets him go by. I mean, Phillips isn't running for the championship, so he just kind of lets him go by there. Here is Casey Lester running back in 29th place, actually keeping this car com competitive with a bunch of other cars, so uh, good job to him, actually. Uh, this That car was pretty slow at Decatur. As now lap number 60, the leaders start pitting here. As you see, most of the front runners coming in, there's Alex Phillips, uh, Zach Meyer, Sam Brown, and a few others coming in. Here comes Gaspar D'Souza, and oh, what is he doing? Gaspar D'Souza blowing the speed limit, and uh, you, you missed your pit. Oh, something broke on that car. Something definitely broke on the 92 as he tried to enter the pits. I think he lost the brakes on that car. But here is the 32 car of Ian Elias staying out for a few extra laps. Ian Elias uh, currently holds second in the championship uh, at the end, if the race were to end right now. And uh, he'd come with, he'd be within 40 points of Claire Ausier. And Cleveland is a double points event. So uh, he would have to only finish about 20 positions in front of Ausier if the race were to end right now. But Ian Elias brings his car into the pits this lap, lap number 62. And when he comes out of the pits, well, I don't really see anybody around him that he'd be battling for position. Uh, Ian Elias had an excellent pit stop. Comes out, and if you look back there, there's Alex Phillips, and he is the closest competitor to Ian Elias at this point after the pits have cycled out uh, he has to contend with the JK Racing Great Wall Armada though here is Dan Foray and he's moved up into 12th position a very strong run for Dan Foray and this uh, Terra International Motorsports team they haven't had too many strong runs throughout the year and I think they're really looking forward to this uh, to kind of finish out the year strong and hopefully get a good run in. Uh, there's Chris Winter behind him, and Chris Winter's had a good strong season as well. Two Canadians there doing battle for the 12th position. Alex Phillips now has caught up to Ian Elias, and uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna, if he's gonna battle him for the win or try and pull away from the rest of the other people, uh, kind of drafting each other. But Alex Phillips subbing for Lenny Jacobs. If he wins, Lenny Jacobs gets crap for the win because Lenny Jacobs did start this race. But uh, is he going to kind of lean out or lay down and uh, let Elias take the win? Well, we'll see uh, later on. I mean, it's it's lap number 65 of, uh, of 100. Oh, looks like uh, he's going to go for the lead here as Alex Phillips uh, doesn't seem to be too concerned with letting Ian Elias take the championship, or at least try and uh, gain as much ground as possible on the championship. Maybe uh, he's just trying to get some bonus points for this 52 team as they're kind of down in the championship. Um, can't really say for sure, but Ian Elias running right back there on his bumper. Here's Greg Maddox, and Maddox has moved up into fourth place now. He's got Zach Meyer right behind him and Preston Bell in front. And talk about somebody who's been consistent. Um, Greg Maddox, ever since he started qualifying races at the beginning of the season, he was out of the top 30. He has made uh, in 11 starts, he's got nine top 10s. That's consistency right there. So here is Ian Elias making a move on the bottom, trying to get around Alex Phillips there, and he does so as Lewis Jones holds up Alex Phillips on the high line. Here's Nicholas Corradovos running in seventh place right behind Tom Wilson. And uh, I think that Cale Bernfart Jr. back there, that's not for position. Bernfart Jr. is a lap down. I'm not sure if Gallagher is a lap down or not, but Corradovos also looking for uh, also uh, kind of a long shot in the championship. Back there is uh, J.C. Carpenter. He's a lap or two down right now. As uh, 
Well, he's caught in a Johnson Racing sandwich right now as Bernfart Jr. is racing him really hard for apparently no reason. But Cora Dovos moves up to sixth after that. Here's Barton Sandy, and he's running still in the top ten. Uh, Sam Brown in front of him, that's for position. But the other three behind him, uh, all three of those are a lap down or more. Dan Lechleiter, uh I think that's Ramsey Cockiner and Rub Nelson back there. But... Barton Sandy hanging strong. He's been in the top ten all day. And, uh, well, there's Pete Maverick, and he's had all sorts of problems today. But Barton Sandy battling with Sam Brown for eighth position now. So uh, he's going to do that. Here's, oh, oh, Travis Keating. What are you doing? Really? He just pulled across the track right in front of Tommy Urban and uh, just kind of wrecked himself. Uh I, I kind of want to see that card die now. Here's J.C. Carpenter, and he is uh, he's up to 28th in this circle track racing car. Uh, a few sponsors jumped on board from a couple teams that didn't qualify. Travis Keating continues to hold up people back there. Um, I didn't know a car could go three wide and block uh, all three lanes like that. But J.C. Carpenter doing an excellent job with this upstart team. They... They only formed three weeks ago and uh, brought two cars here, so they're really making some progress. As now, here is Ian Elias continuing to lead. It's still a two-car battle at the front. There's just 20 laps to go right now as uh, it looks like it's going to be a two-man fight between Alex Phillips, the debutante, and Ian Elias going for the championship here in this number 32 car, or at least trying to close in on the championship. Uh, let's see here. Alex Phillips pulling on the bottom. Going, oh, something. He's checking up. He's pulling into the pits. Alex Phillips has a problem from the lead as now Alex Phillips dives onto pit road. He's reporting a puncture on that car. Huge, huge heartbreak for Alex Phillips in this 52 car, though. He'll have a top ride next year, I'm sure. Here's Scott Wallen. Uh, with just 14 laps to go. He's running in 16th place. So uh, Lucas Motorsports definitely made a good decision bringing three cars here today because all three cars, well, uh, they're performing above expectations, honestly. Uh, ben Worthington is the worst running of the three, and he is in that third car, the 0-6. Uh, Ian Elias has opened up a huge lead now. He's up by eight seconds over uh, the second pack with, uh, I think, Preston Bells back there, among others. Here is uh, Greg Maddox. Actually, Greg Maddox is the one leading this group. Uh, he's up to second place, and he is the model of consistency in this number 78 car. Whenever that car is qualified, he's almost always put in the top 10, or even the top 5, as he's doing here today. Ben Worthington on the bottom, trying to work around. He uh, Worthington hasn't had the best day. Uh, neither has Barry Juveno there, but he's going to let him go by. Zach Meyer back there is in third place. Z what, <laughs> what a run for Zach Meyer. He, he might not win this one, but it's still an excellent performance by that team. Here is Chris Winter, and this is a good battle going on there. Dan Lechleiter pulls on the bottom, letting them go by. But the battle is between uh, pretty much all of these cars in the shot, except for Lechleiter as now uh, they cycle through and uh, the battle continues with just 10 laps to go. Uh, also in this battle is right here, the 35 car of Kelly Blackwire. She's up to 11th. One more spot and kids will eat for free in a very surprising performance by this number 35 team. I honestly did not expect her to even make the show, but Somehow she pulled it off and is now nearly in the top 10 in that underpowered number 35 car. Richard Dean MacGyver, something's wrong with that car. With just a few laps to go, just two laps to go here, lap number 98. Uh, he's going to slow down. Uh, is he going to draw a caution? If he draws a caution, we'll have to go to a green-white checkered. As uh, he pulls to the bottom of the track, there goes a few of the leaders. And... Uh, Slowing down, slowing down, still no caution, and uh, well, the, he's going to stop on track, but I'm still not seeing yellow. 
uh, as now no yellow has been thrown and Ian Elias comes out of turn number four and he is going to win here at Charlotte today. A dominating performance by Ian Elias in this number 32 car. Greg Maddox comes home second. Nicholas Corridovos rounds out the top three. Zach Meyer got nabbed for fourth place. Tom Wilson fifth. Preston Bell sixth. Sam Brown. Barton, Sandy, Chris Benson, and Cody Deke round out your top ten. Chris Winter finishes 11th for Lecklider Racing. Kyle McWulla, what a finish for him. 12th place. Ike Durbin finishes 13th. Kelly Blackwater fell back late to finish 14th, but that's still an excellent run for her. Dan Foray, 15th. Michael Grant and John Bracci, two teammates, finish 16th and 17th. Whitney Fuller has a strong run in 18th. Scott Wallen faded late and will finish 19th, and Barry Juveno rounds out your top 20 here at Charlotte. And now let's take you to the points. Here you can see Claire Ausier is still number one in the championship with 500 points, but coming into Cleveland, the top 12 can theoretically win the championship and mathematically win the championship, provided Claire Ausier DNQs. If Claire Ausier does make the race, then only nine cars can win the championship. And if they make, and uh, if Claire Ossier doesn't finish last, then that means only seven cars can win the championship. So uh, that makes this scenario very interesting. Ian Elias second place, Nicholas Corridovos third, Clara Kindall fourth, Greg Maddox fifth, and Ike Durbin, Barry Juveno, I'd say they all have a pretty decent shot at winning the championship here. Uh, headed into Cleveland, as Cleveland is a double points event. Uh, aside from that, I had, uh, you're, you're taking a risk if you're betting on this. Uh, Brian Gallagher, 8th. Gaspar D'Souza, 9th. Gaspar D'Souza fell down quite a bit after uh, making an unscheduled pit stop and uh, that car breaking on him. Chris Winter, 10th. Ramsey Cockner, 11th. Chris Benson in 12th place is the last driver who can mathematically win the championship. He would tie Claire Ausier, but I still think Ausier would get it on uh, wins. Uh, Sam Brown in 13th, Pete Maverick 14th, Cameron Taylor 15th, Barton Sandy 16th, Dan Foray 17th, Preston Bell, Cody Deke, and John Bracci rounds out your top 20.